Hey guys, we got another coach conversation. Um, I'm Giuseppe Papaccio. I am an assistant coach at NJIT. We play in the ASON conference in Newark, New Jersey. We got Coach Pinkman. You can introduce yourself. How's it going, everybody? My name is Pat Pinkman. I'm the pitching coach at Seton Hall University. Uh, we're in South Orange, New Jersey, and uh, we're in the Big East Conference. So just to give you guys a little bit of background, Coach Pinkman and I worked together for a year at Seton Hall. We've known each other for, for a couple years before that, but the, the idea I got behind this conversation that I wanted to have recorded with, with you, Pink, is, is something that we kind of talk about, and I think we see eye to eye in, in mental game and breathing and mindset and stuff like that, but I think one of the biggest things that, that players, coaches at every level right now are talking about, and I'm guilty of it too, talking about the process and me and you have had conversations before and I like the way that you explain the process in 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 really simple layman's terms to to anybody across the board it could be a player it could be a coach so I want to just kind of toss it up and let you kind of explain the way you you like to think of the process yeah the 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 one thing that I did many years ago and my dad taught it to me at our academy when we brought in new lessons was we would always ask the player what the most important part of reading a map was. And unfortunately, most of them had cell phones and they used uh, <laughs> Google Maps. <clears throat> but for us old guys that had to use real maps, the, first, the most important part is not the uh, end point or point B, which is typically your goals in sports, but it's your starting point or point A. And a lot of times, people try to develop a process around point B without first identifying point A. And um, that's been something in my personal life I've always tried to really hone with and, and obviously with a, a pitching staff, getting new guys every year, uh, changing schools recently and coming in and understanding, you know, where are we right now? Where, you know, how good are we? What can we do? to get to our point B because every year everybody wants to hold up the trophy. Everybody wants to get drafted. Everybody wants the scholarship, but where are you right now? What can you do, you know, and sort of that, that arrow from point A to point B to, to really get to that goal. And um, I think the one thing, Dr. Price, who is um, part of the leadership school at um, Seton Hall, worked with our guys and we had some really valuable time with him this fall. He said, and this is a really clear way of putting it, the processes are, the process is critical behaviors or actions um, you must take to improve your chances of achieving your outcome. And when I heard that, I was kind of floored. I was like, that is the most concise way of understanding what the process is because like we've talked about, guys are just like, okay, coach, process, I get it. Yeah, I'm in there, I'm locked in. and they're not really because we as coaches sometimes take for granted explaining it like that in great detail. That's something that I completely agree with you and I'm guilty of that too. It's like I've, I've said it to our guys and if, and if any of the guys are listening, they'll probably shake their head. I'm like, trust it, trust the process. And I think that goes, I think that's why it's so important for, for guys like coaches and players to hear it is because coaches say it and players hear it all the time. It's like, trust the process, trust the process. But, when I was younger playing, I, I'm, I don't really know what the process is defined as. Like, I don't know exactly what right. that is. And the way you mapped it out really made sense to me when you explained it was like point A and point B. B is like for a recruit, it's the scholarship, it's being recruited. It could be for a college player, it could be being drafted, it could be being all conference. And like being A, the way I think of it is, is maybe like taking account of where you are right now. And then point A, is important because if you don't, if you're not realistic with where you are right now, it's it's hard to it's hard to find your way. Like you said on the map, if you don't know where you are, how do you know where like yeah. where you need to go? What do you how do you know the 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 journey to get there? And that's something that I think is easy for for players and coaches to understand. It is almost that arrow is the process. It is the journey, and I think it's it makes sense for people to to try and and make that process personal to you. Like mm -hmm. I if, if the way I always think of it is like you don't want to be the kid or the adult that got their degree and got the job they wanted to please somebody else. Like the kid that goes and gets a job to make his parents happy 
couple years down the road, he's 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 working for Friday every week, and he doesn't want to he doesn't want to go to work, and he has no yeah. passion doing it. It's like he has to go to work instead of getting to go to work. Exactly, get to go to work. <laughs> like I I think that's something that you can see too. Is is and I I just know from working with you, you're passionate about what you do because it means something to you. It's like you've developed that through playing and through coaching, like your process is to be really good every single day, to be really good at, at just what you're doing. And just the, before I toss it up again to you, I think the reason you have to take it personal is because there are going to be tough times where you have to actually trust the process. And if you develop your process through like studying your failures, looking at where you're at personally, and you've developed the process of things that, that work mentally, things that work in the cage or on the mound or in the bullpen, you can kind of hold yourself accountable to that because you created it. it. It means something to you. Right. So I wanted to, I wanted to ask you if you, if you think there's anything that's like, I know trusting the process is easy, but the, it's easy to talk about, but do you think there's anything specifically that's like difficult when people say trust the process? Yeah, I think, it, I think a lot of it gets lost in the, um, the idea that, we, you know, we're surrounded by technology and we're surrounded by achievements that players are trying to accomplish, whether it be, you know, average launch angle, exit velocity, spin rate, um, gyro degree, you know, whatever it is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tangible results that we can get to a point and say, man, I got there, but there's no guarantee that that gives us our outcome what we, our desired outcome. And I think one of the things that, that is difficult in baseball is there is, and, and you said it at one point, there's no, I think you said it last week when you guys were talking about truth seeking and understanding a lot of that and the process of, there is no, if I do this, if I prime for five minutes, I'm going to go two for four with a double. Um, and it, if I work on my spin rate or if I work on my breaking ball, yes, I have a, an outcome that is desirable, but it doesn't necessarily help me with success. So getting to a point where you can achieve those things while still improving, to me, that's where you start to understand the process a little better, where it's like, okay, you know, I want to be an all-conference player. Great. Point B. Where am I now? I didn't get recruited by a division one school. <laughs> so I walked on and I, I gotta, I gotta get some, some work done. What's a good way to improve to get to that point. Okay. My bat speed needs to improve my ability to, to, you know, not chase sliders in the dirt needs to improve my pitch identification. My uh, spin rate on my fastball is really good for a, a sinker ball and I'm throwing four seamers that are flat. Those things combine into hopefully something that's going to help you achieve success. And then you start to say, hey, this is starting to work. I'm starting to build momentum. Now where's my point A? Now where's my point B? Where am I? Am I starting for the team? Yes. Okay, great. I'm closer to my goal. Um, point A has moved. Now the arrows are changing, like you said. And then point B potentially has moved. I, I can sniff all conference. Maybe I got a shot at playing pro ball. Or maybe I got a shot at, you know, moving to the next level. Yeah. So, and that's kind of, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you was, you know, moving from Seton Hall, being at Manhattan and then going to NGIT where you had a little bit more, um, I would say, you know, a body of work, taking that into a new program like NGIT, how did, how did that work and how did those guys receive it? And were they just kind of like floored that you were even talking about it or had they had experience with it? No, I think that that's actually a really good point when we talk about processes because I think coaches, players, everybody across the board sometimes are looking at the the point B, whether it be a coach looking at the next job or a player looking at like the scholarship, but what happens when you get there? And that's exactly what we're talking about is if you're skipping the steps and skipping the process and you're shortchanging your journey, you're going to get to this, to your next job or to your, you're going to get to school where you got the scholarship and, and I think the truth will come out. And that's a real, that's a really good point that you just had is like, how did the guys take it? And I think that I can, I can relay a message to them because I kind of believe in the process. I created my own process and that's mm -hmm. where some players, I think get a little bit disconnected. It's like their process isn't their own. So they can't really dive into it every single day and trust it. And I think whether it be coaching or playing, 
or a regular job, it's like you're you're going to get out of it what you put in. And I think when when you say like me being at Manhattan and Seton Hall, it's like those those days and those years that I was at those schools, I was really like creating my game plan and creating my journey. Yeah. So then like for me, I was a volunteer and then you get a, a paid job, you you want your body of work to have helped you instead of just always focusing, I need that paid job or I need that scholarship. It's, it's like a player and then you show up on campus as a freshman and you're like, oh my God, I got my scholarship and I didn't work out the whole senior year. I didn't work out my whole summer. It's like when your process and that's, that's kind of what I talked about last time is like truth seeking. When your process has something built into it that's revolving around truth and it means something to you, mm-hmm. you'll actually do it. And I think that's important from, from coaching too. Is like the, the truth will be told when, when you get to that spot. So point A, like we were saying before, point A kind of is, is, is where you're at now, but point B can be like liquid. It's always moving. Like it's, it's always flowing, whether it be scholarship, all conference, draft pick, but if you build like if you build the process up to just like some fundamental stuff that you need to do every day, I know I got it as a baseball player. Is like you you get so far into the process of competing and being a good baseball player. Like those things that I do every single day as a player, I I now do in my regular life. Like I have, I'm sure you're you're the same way. I just know from knowing you, like a lot of us are routine based, and that's like our process. Like in the morning, I'll do the same thing every morning. I wake up at the same time, and you do this, and you do this, and you read this, and you you make your kids breakfast and like it's it's just like what you feel you trust gets you in the right mindset or gets you to to like propel yourself into the right. day. So I think that's an important point to hit on is just like we're lucky that we all play baseball and for the high schoolers listening, like you guys are lucky that you're learning the process now. It's like this the stuff that you learn, the fundamentals of, of the process is gonna help you down the road when you do go on to your next job or you do have kids or something like that, you're going to be like, all right, I have to do the little things now mm-hmm. because it's going to pay off in the end. And if you didn't learn that through baseball, it's hard to, it's hard to really trust. Yeah. That. I, I, one of the things that I was thinking about when I was in my front yard hitting wiffle ball golf balls with my son was, <clears throat> you know, why is the process so difficult to, to formalize in baseball? And I'm sitting there hitting golf balls and I'm, I'm going through my process every swing. I'm gripping it. I'm doing my routine. And I realized that when, you know, golf in many ways is so far advanced from baseball, technology, um, mental game. People have sports psychologists on their, in their RV or whatever. And it really, I, I, I just kind of like came, you know, came in my head. Baseball is a team sport. So therefore, if my process is faulty, and I'm just trying to get exit velo, and I go for four, we could win six nothing, and it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, my process doesn't exist in that space. But as a golfer, if my process is faulty, I, I bogey a hole, then maybe I bogey two holes, then maybe I double bogey a hole, and I'm out of the tournament. I don't get paid. I don't, you know, I'm not a successful golfer. The accountability factor in golf is so much u- more unique where – in baseball, you have accountability during your at-bat. You have accountability on the mound, but your teammates can pick you up and a coach can pull you from the game because he sees you're not in the right space. Your body language is speaking volumes. You're just not there. So a change is made. In golf, it is a solo pursuit and you better be dialed in. Otherwise, your, your ultimate outcome that you're trying to achieve is going to fail because your process is not is not working or it's not polished. Um, And so when, you know, when you talk about point A, point A in my mind is accountability. If you can hold yourself accountable for where you are, um, you have a lot better, you know, ability to direct those arrows toward point B. Um, You know, like we talked about earlier, you know, my first year at Seton Hall, when you were still there, we had a really good season and, the pitching staff was a, a well-oiled machine with a lot of upperclassmen that were, you know, really driven on their own. They didn't need a lot of pushing. I just kind of sort of steered the ship a little bit. They had their own process. They believed in it. And then when that vacated, it left kind of an empty hole. And I just assumed that the next crop would come up. And, and I, didn't, I didn't do enough on my own to help guide them through that to create their own process. And so I think it hurt us as a team 
on the mound, we had a lot of talent, but we got punched in the face early in the season and was, it was difficult to recover. Once I finally looked in the mirror and said, you know what, this needs to be, you know, we need to work on this part of the game more, which is just rebound, rebounding, responding. We started to, you know, they started to come together and, and started to perform better. So this year with Dr. Price and, and, and um, Coach Shep was really the, 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 the pusher behind that. We made it a point. Um, we keep daily statistics in InterSquad about uh, our, our response rate, our positive response rate. Awesome. So, so if, if you're constantly thinking after a, a pitcher, you know, if, you, if I walk a guy, instead of thinking about, man, that umpire blew the call or my catcher botched it or I, the ball slipped out of my hand, my thought process is I got to get the next guy so I can respond for the team. So if, if I'm a shortstop and I boot the ball, hey, I've got to make the next play to respond for my team. That's always in the present versus thinking about what happened. Um, and I think that's been huge for our guys. We were, we were, you know, we weren't, we weren't 15 and one, but we were in a really good spot. We were improved from last year and we were, we were really getting, hitting our stride, I think, as a team. Yeah. That makes, that makes me think about one thing that I, that when we talk A and B and the arrow mm -hmm. to get to the arrow is like the process and the journey, but it's also, when you think of it like a map, you think of it like you need to, you need a vehicle on the map is the way I'm, I'm looking at it. And like, what are, what are you fueling your vehicle with? And that's your process. It's like those daily things can be mindset. It can be breath work. It can be positive affirmations. It can be optimism. It can be all those things. But if you're never fueling the vehicle, if it's just like the process, the process, the process, and it's every day, like if my process is going to the cage and doing push-ups and do whatever, whatever my process yeah. is, if I'm not really fueling it and feeding it with quality things that, that I think lead to high performance, like, like mindset and mm -hmm. in almost like how do I respond versus react or how do I handle adversity? I think those are the little things that you have to feed your vehicle the right things. Like your, your vehicle is going to move as well as the way that you fuel it. And I think that's, that kind of goes to show like you'll get what you put into the process instead of like if you're always looking at that end goal instead of like what am I doing now? It's like you're always going to be reaching for something, but you can't really hold on to anything at the same time. Yeah. Like you're, go you're always going to want a little bit more. That's the competitive nature of, a, of an athlete. Um, and I think that just the, the way we've explained it from point A to point B and using, like, using the arrows as your process and your, and your vehicle, I think, that's, I think it's made it pretty simple for, for some guys to understand, and, and unless you have anything else that – I, the one thing I would say is Dr. Price, when he talked to our guys about um, positive self-talk, he actually used the analogy of an elephant and your ego is on top of the elephant. And what are you feeding your elephant to move you down that path? And that, so it, it's funny that it's a slow moving animal <laughs> because the process is slow moving at times. Exactly. Um, but that's that's something that I'll mention to our guys that are that are having a tough go is hey what are you feeding your elephant you know what are you putting in that that treasure chest of your your um your mental your your mindset are you filling it with positive talk do you have visualizations and goals or are you just constantly um you know kind of focusing on the negative and and, and the result of failure versus this is, you know, my process is the elephant, you know, the journey. I got to be on, you know, I got to feed the elephant positive things. And that's the only way you're going to continue that process. Yeah. And that, I mean, we could talk about this forever. I wanted to keep it short yeah. for, for all the guys that are watching. I try and uh, try and just lay it out as easy as we can. But I was just thinking about what, what you just said is like, everybody thinks about the process and breath work and feeding, like, like you're saying, feeding the elephant and they, one misconception is that like they're born with it. And I think that's maybe we can talk about that at, at a later date, but it's yeah. like that's a skill. That's a skill that everybody needs to practice every single day, whether you're a player, a coach, a businessman, whatever it is. It's like all that mindset stuff is is a skill that you need to develop. But Pink, you're the man. I always, yeah, always appreciate, appreciate you, talking to you. Keep crushing these talks, man. They're awesome. Stay safe and I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully we play some baseball pretty soon. That's right. Let's do it. I'll talk to you. We'll see you. All right. Booyah.